military. And so, Admiral, the question I have, I'd ask you, you're inevitably going to have a new group of uh, civilians coming into the Pentagon and into the White House. If you, if you were going to have to brief them about how to think about the world and the challenges confronting us, given your experience over the last several years, what would it be? I think uh, <clears throat> one of the things that I would do is, is, is look at not just where the challenges are, but where are the opportunities for the nation. And uh, in the year leading up to last October, we in the Navy devoted a significant amount of attention, thought, and even travel as we went out around the country uh, to talk to leaders in government, business, uh, and uh, academia to, to look into the future and where must we as a, and I'll speak for my service, the Navy be. And we believe that the future uh, areas of interest for us are the Western Pacific, Indian Ocean region, and the Arabian Gulf, because that is where our prosperity is derived and where the prosperity of our uh, allies and friends and partners are derived. Uh, so the concentration there will be extremely important. Uh, and the need to not simply focus on the current operations that we have underway in the Middle East, in Iraq and Afghanistan, uh, but to think about the trends that are occurring and to put in place uh, what I call the best options. Uh, and that takes the form of what type of, of uh, uh, concepts do we have in place, what type of policies do we have in place, and what are the procurements that are being undertaken by the military to deliver for uh, the administration and the future leaders of the nation decades in, in advance. Uh, uh, what can we deliver in the form of best options uh, for them? Uh, and that's a hard thing to do, I believe, in the circumstances that we find ourselves in. Uh, but we have to see how some of these trends are, are moving. Uh, in my realm, uh, for example, there are many who think that the submarine is a relic of the Cold War. In the next two decades, the number of, of submarines in the world will increase by 50%. Um, that gets to some fundamental issues that, that relate to the prosperity of our country. 90% uh, of that which moves on the surface of the globe moves on the water. There is nothing more disruptive to that flow than a submarine because you don't really know if it's there and you begin to see phantoms everywhere. So how do we approach that? The proliferation of ballistic missiles. Uh, I believe that that will lead us uh, toward a weapon of blackmail intimida and intimidation. They're becoming more sophisticated. So what are the types of things that we must do relative to that? I also think that the area where many of our future battles will be fought and indeed are being fought now are in the area of cyberspace. How do we protect our uh, networks? And then how do we put ourselves in a position to what I say uh, allow us to gain um, decision advantage or decision superiority because in the future speed will matter and that speed will be driven by how we move information, how that information is protected and then how that information is being acted upon. And the battle space of the future is going to change. Precision is going to be increasingly important as combatants mix with non-combatants and as uh, uh, battlefields move into urban areas in ways that we're, we're seeing today. So how do you discriminate? How do you make that decision and take that speed of decision uh, and apply it to the type of warfare that we may face? Uh, I would also say that the, the young men and women that will serve in the military uh, have to have a very, very sophisticated view of the world in which they live. They, have to be, they will have to be culturally aware. Uh, they will also have to be comfortable with assimilating large amounts of information. When I came in the Navy, my battle space was defined by the range of the radar, which really was a function of the height of the mast, like being on top of a mountain you see farther. Today, I can sit in any one of the ships in the United States Navy. If I'm in the Pacific, I can talk to somebody in the Atlantic, and I can see what they're looking at in the Atlantic. Uh, so how do you move that information? How do you make those types of decisions? I also believe that the that future leaders must be very, very attuned to what I think will become hypersensitivity uh, to issues of sovereignty. Uh, the ability for us to operate and not even be perceived to be infringing on other nations' sovereignty. And that's where I believe the Navy and the Marine Corps uh, are able to provide that global presence in those areas that are of greatest interest to this nation 
and that we can be there and not be there because we are not on someone's sovereign soil. Uh, the demographics of our own nation are going to be a challenge. How do we take the generation of young men and women who are serving and who will serve in the future and attract them into the military, retain them into the military, uh, and, and uh, recruit them in and then retain them? Uh, and what are the policies that really must address what is becoming the work-life balance, or the millennials may say the life-work balance, uh, what must we be doing with regard to uh, career options and opportunities for those young people? And uh, an area that's of great interest to me and great focus for me is the issue of diversity within our military. Uh, the military of the United States must reflect the nation. Uh, our total force does, our leadership does not. Uh, it is largely white male. That is not what our demographic will be in 2050. And we have to work today to put in place that demographic of 40 years uh, from now. Uh, there are also internal challenges uh, that must be addressed. Uh, the, the methods that we have and the policies that we have with regard to procuring the systems that our men and women will use uh, in the military is one that has become very cumbersome, very expensive, and, and uh, very unresponsive to the demands of tomorrow. So that's an area that uh, I believe we must uh, pay particular attention to. So with that, I'll end there.